Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cents Switch Slot gaming video for this week, for the week of May 26th to June 1st. And we got nine stories to cover this week. Obviously, we're getting a lot of information lately because we're gearing up for E3 and so forth. So it'll be interesting to see what both Microsoft and Sony and um nintendo are going to be offering though um we know sony's not going to have their press conference though but they'll pop there's a good chance they'll probably do their state of play which is similar to what nintendo is doing with their digital presentation we know microsoft is going to have a presentation there as well and of course we'll probably hear about the next call of duty since that's the trailer already been revealed about that which interestingly enough there's supposedly a source code for a possibility of a nintendo switch version and while that's possible Given so far, given the absence of Call of Duty on the Nintendo Switch so far, I'm leaning towards it being highly unlikely. I could be wrong, and it could actually come to the Nintendo Switch, but right now I don't think that is going to happen or anything like that. We also we also heard about basically Suda51 will have something at E3 this year. It will be interesting to see what he is going to show off. Other, um, what what's he going to show off remains to be seen, though. Um, out, uh, if I had my take on it, though, personally, though, I would have either like a remake of the first no more first or second no more heroes, no more heroes three, Shadows of the Dam remake or sequel, or of course Killer Seven coming to the Nintendo Switch. That would be great. But we'll have to wait and see if he has something to show at E3, though. But we also know that No More Hero, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes is also coming to the PS4 and um, PC. Obviously, it was a time exclusive, which, as a Nintendo fan, while somewhat disappointed, though, I'm not really losing sleep over it, though. We'll see how well those two, see how well that game does on the PS4 and the pc uh for right now but let's get started with our main with our nine main stories and we'll start off with the first one and that has to do with the witcher 3 and the rumors of it going around about it coming to the nintendo switch now this rumor has kind of gone back and forth for quite some time um recently um a while back there was a report supposedly from a french um a reported that from a french retailer that the witcher 3 showed up for the nintendo switch now from what i understand that got taken down and that led to the speculation of whether they got the information wrong or if it was true and they may have jumped the gun and they weren't supposed to announce it or anything like that well it seems as though we're now getting some info now other retailers are picking it up which is leaning towards the possibility that the witcher 3 could come to the nintendo switch um two articles i do want to point out on uh, an article from screen rant um their point their article says quote um, several leaks suggested that the vast open world of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt RPG will arrive on the Nintendo Switch. In Japan, the Switch recently surpassed the PS4 sales. That meant Switch owners had to start demanding more titles, including those that are available on their system. The Switch initially launched in 2017 with its RPG, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but I've seen other big releases recently, mostly notably Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the fast-selling Nintendo Switch game of all time. Although Nintendo continues to release exclusives for the Switch, including the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Shield, games from PC and other consoles are getting ported over to the Nintendo Switch 2, including the Elder Scroll V Skyrim. We've also gotten, you know, Diablo, and recently we just got Dragon Dogma on there as well. Um, so maybe it isn't a surprise, so maybe it isn't as big of a surprise that a leak suggests that The Witcher 3 is getting ported over to the Nintendo Switch. According to a reset era, product listing for the title began turning up recently in Asia from several online retail sites along with the Nintendo Switch logo. And although there isn't much to go on to confirm this port, um, it is important to reiterate, I apologize if I'm saying the name incorrectly, that this isn't just one retail outlet posting the listed on site. Several different stores have it listed as an upcoming release on the Nintendo Switch. Um, the, the Witcher 3 um, would probably be one of the most spec in intensive games to arrive on the Nintendo Switch. It is likely that a port will probably see a downgrade in graphics from PC and other consoles, which 
if true, I honestly wouldn't be surprised whatsoever, considering the fact, um, look at Doom and Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, as an example of that, though. However, the idea of uh, being able to play The Witcher 3 on the Switch, particularly in handheld mode, certainly has its appeal, especially considering that the game remains popular four years after its initial release. Interest in the title will remain strong too, especially with The Witcher TV series in development at Netflix. So Switch players will likely lo love to get their hands on the game to play on, on their favorite system. A Switch port will also mark the first time The Witcher 3 was available as a portable title, which could hit a new demographic. Although The Witcher 3 developer CD Projekt Reg seems solely focused on Cyberpunk 2077, um, the studio did state that that its presence at E3 2019 will be one of the biggest, <coughs> excuse me, one of the biggest E3 appearance ever for the studio. At E3, brands will undoubtedly get more details on Cyberpunk 2077, potentially the developer's next big franchise, but the studio could have some surprise announcements in the work too. Um, the Witcher 3 will arrive on the Switch would surprise fans, but it would also please Nintendo enthusiasts who haven't yet played the game or wanted to play it again on a different system. Interesting enough, though, that rumor also later spread to some people pointing to basically um, Panic Button being the one developing the game. However, Panic Button shot that down um, in an article from uh, Nintendo uh, Soup. Um, they got a report from, they posted something on Reddit, Panic Button, and they said, quote, Why didn't anyone tell us we were supposed to be porting that? If so, we're way behind. Seriously, though, we are not working on the, on the Witcher 3. So, obviously, they have, deni they have come out denying saying that they are not working on it, though. Um, I'm very curious to see if this truly does happen, in a way. Um, the fact that some retailers are leaking this, though, does give the impression, though, and it does, that The Witcher 3 is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, if that's true, if The Witcher 3 does come to the Nintendo Switch, I'm very curious to see how they're going to pull it off. Will, there be a, will they be able to squeeze everything they can into a cartridge? Um, right now, I think the current biggest Switch cartridge right now is 32 gigabytes, although we have heard about the 64-bit one, although I don't know if that's, ex that's out yet or not. Um, will they be able to squeeze it in there? Is this, or will it be a digital-only title? Or could we see it be available through, like, just streaming, like we saw, like in Japan, which was, they had with Resident Evil 7 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, though? So... I am a little curious to see how this works out, and I will say until there is an official confirmation, I mean an actual confirmation on this, I'm right now taking this for the moment with a grain of salt for now though. That said, I'm not going to rule it out, and it will be really interesting to see if The Witcher 3 comes to the Nintendo Switch. Now, if it does, let's just say it does though. If The Witcher 3 comes to the Nintendo Switch, if 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 it comes in a both physical or digital form, and it sells very well on the Nintendo Switch, it, and if that does happen, there is a possibility that perhaps, and again, this is a long shot though, I'm not saying this is going to happen, I, there's no guarantee this will happen at all or anything like that, but if The Witcher 3 were to sell very well on the Nintendo Switch, I think it could open the door to the possibility that a game like Cyberpunk 2077 may could come to the Nintendo Switch. Now, like I said, there's no guarantee that's going to happen, um, and the odds are, I would say the odds are kind of slim for that though, but if The Witcher 3 does sell very well on the Nintendo Switch, if that does ha if The Witcher 3 does come to the Nintendo Switch and it sells very well, then... I can't say that I wouldn't rule out the possibility that um, Cyberpunk 2077 could come to the Nintendo Switch. That said, if that ever happens, if Cyberpunk 2077 ever ever does come to the Nintendo Switch, I think it's going to be ways away before that ever happens. So right now, I would say, like I said, it's too early to tell if it is going to happen or anything like that. But my overall take about the, the rumor is that it's sounding like The Witcher 3 is coming to the Nintendo Switch, but like I said, 
Until there is an official confirmation to be clear if it is happening or not, though, for now, I'm treating this, taking, treating this as nothing more than a rumor with a huge grain of salt for the um, moment. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part two, and we're going to get from a comment Techland made in regards of their support for the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a comment um, Techland has recently made in regards of their support for the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those who may not know who they are, the developer was famous for when they released the original, I believe, um, Dead Island and I think Dead Island Riptide as well. Uh, with But with that franchise now in the hands of THQ Nordic, which they're currently saying at this moment, though, um, that Dead Island 2 is still alive and they're still working on it, though, although that game's been in development hell for quite some time. But re they broke away and they put out their own franchise, you know, Dying Light, which, got pr which certainly got praise from a lot of people. And the game had earned support for over the years, including their last, I think, DLC called The Following and all that stuff. And they're currently working on its sequel, uh, Dying Light 2. They also published several titles as well. Well, an interview was made, interview Techland gave, they made some interesting comments in regards to the Nintendo Switch. Both, both first there's the bad news, and then there's the one that is kind of interesting and could be somewhat of a good news, but that will depend on your perspective. Um, in an interview with, um, with um, comicbook.com, they basically they say basically the Dying Light 2 developer tease a surprise for the Nintendo Switch. Um, according to the article, it states that, quote, E3 2019 is set to kick off the festivals in roughly two weeks, which means panic mode is beginning to set in for many players, many people, whether it be fans or developers. There will be plenty of showing this year, and even though some big names have dropped out of the event, that just gives other a chance to show off even more. One such case will be... Will fe one such showcase will feature Dying Light 2, the highly anticipated sequel to the 2015 title from Techland Publishing. During a recent interview, Techland's um, CTO was asked if the upcoming title will come to the Nintendo Switch. And while it doesn't, while it seems it won't be, they did say there's something say something is coming to the coming to Switch this year. While speaking with WCCFT. Um, recently, they touched on a number of topics, including the possibility of Dying Light 2 being a cross-gen game. However, when when he when the when the CTO was asked if Techland plans on bringing the title to the Nintendo Switch, he said the engine that the studio is using does not support the portable console. We are focusing on AAA content, he said, but I can tell you that we might have a surprise for the Nintendo Switch later this year. I can't tell you uh, more. Um, naturally, this led to wonder what exactly is Techland working on when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, seeing as their games are created on the same um, propriety, proprietarily, I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly though, C Engine, which is being used for Dying Light 2, there's a good chance we won't see any of their titles make it to the Nintendo Switch. There's always a possibility that they are simply publishing another development game on the Switch, but at this point, it definitely is anyone's guess. Either way, here's to hope we see the first Dying Light or Dead Island make its way to the Nintendo Switch. Now, there have been some speculation exactly what, um... Techland is talking about. Are they developing the game? Are they publishing the game or anything like that? Um, we've even got one by a YouTuber by the name of Drake81 who has an interesting take on some of the stuff, even going as far as believing that Techland could be the one developing um, the port of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for the Nintendo Switch, though. Um, if you want to check out his video, I'll have a link in the description of this video. video as well. A link in the description of this video. However, GoNintendo.com picked up a interesting article from from a Polish gaming site that might, may have shed light on exactly what that game Techland is reporting on, though. Um, according to the Polish website, which later got 
I got was able to translate it thanks to Google Translation. It wrote, um, in October of last year, and this is from one of the writers though, um, I wrote that one of Techland's friends told me that something is happening with a brand new Call of Jazar, J-U-A-R-E-Z. I apologize I'm not saying the name correctly though. Um, now I know for sure. In 2018, Techland regained the rights of the COJ brand, which Ubisoft had previously owned. The social media of the series revived, and oddly enough, only Gunslinger entry appeared. It took several months, and I managed to confirm in several sources related to Techland that the home studio is working on a Call of Jazar, um, J-U-A-R-E-Z, again, apologize, I'm not saying correctly, port Gunslinger on the Nintendo Switch. I decided to officially ask the source, and I asked them to confirm or deny, or deny the, po- the possible version on the PS4 and Xbox One, whether it's a remake or a remaster and a release date. I did not receive any answer. However, Techland confirmed they are working something on a the Nintendo Switch. Um, and basically, they wrote on their official blog as though, quote, Techland always listens very closely to its fans. We know that many of them would like to see our products on the Nintendo Switch. We decide to take up this challenge and later this year we will tell you about the surprise that awaits the players. More, however, I cannot betray. Um, this is from the Chief Technology Officer at Techland and wrote on their blog. So, if it turns out to be it isn't Dying Light though, if, it, if, it, if they're not bringing Dying Light and they're bringing a AAA game, I'm very curious to see if this is the game that's going to be coming. Uh, the Call of Jazar. Again, apologize. I'm not saying the name correctly though. So, it's very interesting to see what Techland is going to bring over to the Nintendo Switch. If they're not bringing Dying Light 2 or anything like that, I'm very curious about it. This title looks kind of interesting. The call, the CO, COJ title, though. I never got a chance to try it out, though, but I did hear some things about it, so it's definitely worth, worth taking a look at. What I'm curious to see is that, is this a remaster version? This Will this have, like, were there any DLCs? And if so, will have all the DLCs in it or anything like that? Are we getting a physical version? Is it a digital-only title? If it turns out, to, if this is the title that Techland is referring to, um, coming to the Nintendo Switch. So my overall take on this is that I am somewhat disappointed that Dying Light 2 is not coming to the Nintendo Switch, at least according to what the developers of Techland are saying. But I am very curious to see exactly what game they are bringing to the Nintendo Switch um, this year. Hopefully we'll learn at E3. And I am also very curious if um, this is the title they're referring to. Call of uh, Jazar Jazar Gunslinger. Again, I apologize if I'm saying the name correctly. So I'm very curious if that's the title or if it's a different title to be exact. So... We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully we'll learn more at um, E3. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to part three. And this one has to do with the announcement that a remake of a remake of a entry from the Star Ocean series is not coming not only to the PS4, but to the Nintendo Switch as well. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at an announcement Square made this week in regards of Star Ocean coming, not an, an, a remake of a remastered game, uh, coming not only to the PS4, but also to the Nintendo Switch. Now, when it comes to a lot of Square Enix IP, most people know them mainly for the Final Fantasy games. Uh, Final Fantasy XII still remains my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time, with Final Fantasy X in second place. And of course, we recently have been seeing the Dragon Quest series start making its way, start more and more people getting into that game with the upcoming Dragon Quest game, which is a, supposedly an enhanced version of the PS4 version, coming to the Switch with Nintendo publishing that, that title as well. But Square Enix is known for several other titles that unfortunately haven't gained the kind of reputation in the way games like Final Fantasy have. Some of them may be Brave Man, Brave, Brave Man with Saki. Again, I apologize if I'm saying the name incorrectly on that one. 
um, Parasite Eve, and of course um, the Star Ocean series, which I believe they've published uh, several entries of that before. I remember playing the one on the PS4 though, and I don't think that was bad. Although many fans did not exactly were not big fans of those that game as well. So apparently, it seems as though we are learning from Square Enix that they are bringing over a Star Ocean game, but not just a Star Ocean game. Basically, it is a remaster of a remade game that was a remake of the original Famicom uh, Nintendo title that they ported over to the PSP. It, it's just, just confusing. Anyway, according to from an article from Nintendo Life, they're saying Square Enix has, has announced Star Ocean First Departure R will be released on will be released on the Nintendo Switch and the PS4 in the near future. This particular, this particular, particular version of the action role-playing game was first launched on the PlayStation Portable um, in 2007. The enhanced PSP iteration is based on the Super Famicom Star Ocean game published by Enix, de developed by tri Triace, and originally released in 1996. The high-definition version of the remake of the Switch and PS4 will include new features and a worldwide... Um, Worldwide release has also been confirmed, though. They basically um, posted it on Twitter saying Star Ocean, fan Star Ocean First Departure R, the very first entry in the Star Ocean series, setting the course for the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Um, keep keep communication channels open for future updates. Um, this the tweet they posted. The tweet they posted was picked up by Comic Book. Um, comicbook.com and they're also saying that right now it's they're saying unfortunately um square enix didn't com a common didn't have like a trailer with the announcement but presumably one would come next month at e3 um as as you may know square enix will host a they will host they will host like their event on june 10th where it will provide updates on some of its already announced games and presumably reveal some new titles as well We've heard stories about the Avengers one, which I'll get to that one um, a little bit later, though. But still, um, this is nice, though. The fact that the fact that Square Enix is bringing maybe some more RPGs over to the Nintendo Switch is nice, and they have been um, better in terms of their support for the Nintendo Switch. Um, we um, Octopath Traveler was actually a very good game, and I definitely enjoyed that one on the Nintendo Switch. I'm um, looking forward to the upcoming Dragon Quest one for the Nintendo Switch, and hearing this one is certainly nice, and hopefully we'll hear more at E3, though. I am a little curious to see what kind of um, remake this one's going to be. Um, is it going to have the vis more have the visual like we saw on the PSP, but maybe the resolution bumped up a little bit more, or could we see it like a complete, like, full-on remake, though? Like, maybe having it, like... Maybe using, like, say, like, Unreal Engine 4 or something like that. So I'm very curious to see what this is. So hopefully we'll hear more at E3, though. So, but overall, great. I'm glad that they're opening up their vault and bringing out another game out there, especially to the Nintendo Switch with Star Ocean. Um, here's to hoping, though, that other entries of the Star Ocean series also make their way over to the Nintendo Switch, including ones that were, were, that were on... I think the PS3 and also on the PS4. I know that for yeah, yeah. I know not everyone liked that version, but I wouldn't mind if they ported that over to the um, Nintendo Switch as well. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back, we're gonna get to part four. And this one we're gonna do with an announcement of a VR game coming not only to the PlayStation VR and Oculus Rift, Rift, but also to the. Nintendo Switch VI Labo VR as well, and it's a third-party um, development game. So this that certainly might be interesting to some. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My Two Cent video. For this week and for this one we're going to be taking a look at an announcement of a vr game that's not only coming to the ht vime oculus Rift ps4 but also for the nintendo switch vi the vr labo kit and that one is entitled 
um, Spice and Wolf VR, if I'm saying the name correctly, though. Now, when it comes to VR recently, though, I wasn't sure if it was going to take off um, this time around. Because, I mean, I remember trying out the original VR, but this was a long time ago. Back probably like in 1993, 1994, when, I, when my family and I were visited San Francisco and they had a VR booth and I tried it out. It was an interesting idea and all that stuff. Although, bear in mind, this was released at a time when um 3d 3d graphics and all that stuff or like the kind of graphics like what super mario 64 was was sort of in an early stage or primitive at the time compared to where vr is today and i wasn't sure if vr was going to take off when sony announced their playstation vr but obviously it seems to be seems to be doing very well it, it may have not caught on like the mainstream as much though but it certainly is finding an audience and as and of course with nintendo they recently released their labo vr and that seemed to do very well make it into like the npd charts i think it was the top 10 on the nintendo one as well well apparently as we said as i said apparently a new vr game is being announced and the switch is being included into it as well titled entitled by the name spice and wolf um According to an article from Destructoid, the link will be in the description, it says, quote, Developer Spicy Tail and Gem Drop has added the Nintendo Switch, Switch to the hand, handful of platforms that will receive the virtual reality experience based on the Kwanzaa man manga Spice and Wolf. Um, Spice and Wolf VR was created as a result of two separate crowdfunding campaigns which will see players step in the boots of a series of of a local peddler as they hang out in the remote water mill with the wolf go goddess Holo. The scenario and in-game dialogues will be written by the creator and author of Spice and Wolf. Um, according to the developers, players will be able to interact with Holo, including the all-portent head pat ability as well as variety items around the cottage. The Nintendo Switch will utilize the VR Labo kit. The developer did not, however, did did note, however, that the interactive option option will be limited in the Oculus will be limited in the Switch, Oculus Go, and non VR PC ports. Um, Spice and Wolf VR launches on PC from for the Oculus Wif and HTC Vine June 3rd. The PS4 and Nintendo Switch port will follow later this summer. And according to what Nintendo Life is pointing on, they put out a brief they they put out a brief rundown of the game though, and they say, "quote Take take the role of a peddler and experience a wondrous day deep in the forest in the windmill with Holo, the wolf goddess, cute ears, tails, and all." In addition to the main mode where you can enjoy the anime within the virtual reality space, there's also an interactive mode where you'll be able to pat Holo on the head um, the tail mm -hmm. and just and just have fun examining and moving other objects around in the room please try it out and see how wonderful the feeling of being inside a 2d world can be and experience a unique 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 to virtual reality animation though now i've heard somewhat heard of the anime but i never got a chance to watch it so i have to check it out though although i've heard some good things about it though um, putting that aside, it is nice to see that the Labo VR is getting some support, which also from third-party um, developers as well. So that certainly is nice, and I think that's one of the areas I feel that Labo has kind of lacked in, in a certain way. While the Labo's... Oh, that's just my phone. Never mind that one. While the Labo has gotten supports to a certain degree, thanks to, you know, like, say, like, the handlebar f from one of the Labo kits um, being used in, say, Mario Kart and all that stuff. The support for it has kind of been limited at best to a certain, to a certain degree. So it's interesting to see that a third-party developer is putting the Nintendo Switch of Spice and Wolf VR onto it as well. Now, granted, obviously it may not look nearly as clear as, say, what PlayStation VR or HT Vine 
or the Oculus Rift would be. I mean, obviously the Switch display, I've tried out the Labo VR as well, is at 720p. So you're not gonna get the, exactly the clear thing. But judging by the trailer and all that stuff, I think the art style will more than make up for it though. So my overall takeaway from this though, is that even though I'm not a VR person, it's nice to see um, Labo VR getting a, at least a third party game onto the onto the Labo VR for the Nintendo Switch. And here's to hoping to see um, other third-party developers not only bring, say, like, their games to, say, like, the Labo VR, but maybe we could see some of their games make it onto um, to Labo in general. Again, I'm not against Labo or anything like that. It may not interest me, but it does need... Um, it does need sort of like a third... It needs more games to support it, though, not just one game only so we'll have to wait and see if that happens but overall it's an interesting title and i'm sure those who own a vr headset are probably going to keep an eye out on this one and for those who have the labo vr it's definitely worth taking a look at whether this is the kind of title that interests you or not well that's going to come down to obviously your preference and your taste <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part five. And this one has to do with the decision Nintendo made in regards of for Super Mario Maker 2 that not everyone is particularly happy about. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part five of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at some decisions Nintendo has made in regards of the upcoming release of Super Mario Maker 2. Now, the, Super Ma the first Super Mario Maker, though, was surprisingly a fun game. And it was also a game that utilizes the Wii U gamepad back then. Unfortunately, that was a game that probably should have came out earlier to really show the abilities of what the Wii U was capable of. Obviously, they did it and was released at probably near the tail end of the um, Wii U's life cycle, though. Nevertheless, it was an interesting idea. The fact that you could create your own Mario stage um, with art designs from the original Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario... Super Mario World or from the new Super Mario Brothers U game though. So it was sort of interesting to hear Nintendo announcing that they would be bringing doing Super Mario Maker but doing a full-fledged sequel and they did a tra they did like a direct for it and there was a whole lot of information that has came out about it in regards of banking things from slopes to night and day levels to even using some assets from um, Super Mario 3D World as well, only VI in like in a 2D form. So it was very interesting and it's definitely a title I'm looking forward to and I'm sure a lot of Nintendo fans are looking forward to trying now. That said, there are some decisions that Nintendo had made recently that, well, not everybody is a big fan of. Two to be exact, although one of them turns out to be the one that really has some people scratch their heads and some people not being pleased with Nintendo um, doing this. Um, from an article from Nintendo Life Magazine, links will be in the description, two to be, two to be exact though. The first one is about the fact that um, you won't be able to use the Amiibos uh, for Super Mario Maker 2, or at least at this moment though. According to an article, it says, Continuing on the theme of strange emission from Nintendo's upcoming sequel, Super Mario Maker 2, arguably um, one of the biggest disappointments, although you can debate whether you think this is a big disappointment or not, is the lack of amiibo support in the game. That means no mystery mushroom that turns your turns your turns you into 8-bit renders of characters from video games history. As confirmed by Game Explain after speaking with a Nintendo representative, support for the N N NFC um, figure seemed to have been jettisoned entirely from the sequel. The original Super Mario Maker um, supported nearly all the figures in the original Super Mario in the original Super Mario Brothers playstyle and provided some wonderful opportunities for levels using treasure characters for both inside and outside the Mushroom Kingdom. Of course, there's always a possibility that Amiibos and Mystery Mushroom functionality could be patched at a later date. Um, 
um, of the original game received some pretty substantial updates and post release. Um, as, as and with all the hints of a new thing to come, such as an extra such as space for extra game style, we can only hope that some of these things will appear in the future. So, obviously, though, for now, though, Amiibo support is not going to be in um, Super Mario Maker 2. Could they add the support? Could Nintendo add that support down the road? Yeah, they could do that. We could see a future update for, for it, though. That's always a possibility. But for right now, um, there's no Amiibo support. And it's somewhat of a disappointment, though, because I would have loved to see use the Amiibos and all that stuff. I like collecting them. Don't get me wrong. I like, um... Oh, wait, wait, let me grab my... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I mean, collecting these guys, so don't get me wrong, though. But it is a little disappointing that they're not using it, though. And it could be a sign, in a way, that Nintendo is moving away from them, though. As we saw with the whole Toys for Life content concept, though. I mean, look... Look at Starling Battle for Atlantis. Um, Ubisoft really tried to push that toy for like concept. And that, well, the game sold well below their expectations, even though the Switch version was probably the bet the one that sold better than the other versions did. But they decided to stop all support for that toys, for the Toys for Life concept. So it's possible that while there is a chance an update can happen, it's possible that the Nintendo is all but abandoned the whole Toys for Life concept. But the one that got people really, really um, scratching their heads and somewhat upset about is Nintendo's decision that for some reason you cannot play against friends online in Super Mario Makers 2. Again, from an article from Nintendo Life, it says, quote, Very recently, we were lucky enough to sit down for a short while and sample the upcoming Super Mario Maker 2, and we're happy to, to report that it's shaping up to be a rather tasty treat. Of course, it wouldn't be a Nintendo game without some inexplicit little details or crook that seem to go against receiving wisdom or common sense. Super Mario um, Maker has online competitive and cooperative play. This is a good thing. However, Ninten however Nintendo has revealed a rather perplex or a rather odd detail regarding online play with friends. It seems you can't. Locally, you can play co-op games with up to four players on the same system and competitively against competitive games when you got a console and a copy of the game each as well, linking up four systems wirelessly. However, a Nintendo Treehouse rep has confirmed to Nintendo World Report that potential compromise arises from matchmaking via global le leaderboard should you and your chums play online against strangers, meaning that Playing with friends is not in the immediate facilities, um, is off the cards. Okay, the right, right, okay. This also applies inexplicably to online co op play, which doesn't involve leaderboard. So, once again, and we're still confused, because still confused by this, so bear with us. That means, as things stand, you cannot play co competitive or cooperatively with friends online in Super Mario Maker 2. We're sort of expecting some strange caveat to come to the surface as we discover more about the game Nintendo hasn't disappointed. Remember when you couldn't share your Super Mario Maker 3D levels online at all? The silver lining here is that we've seen the company patch in features post launch with the original game, so if there's enough demand, we could well see a change. But to reiterate, it seems you can't play with your friends in Super Mario Maker 2 online. Now, the fact that you're playing against random people, I'm not losing any sleep really over that or anything like that, but I won't deny this is an this is an odd decision for Nintendo to make. I mean, really? Um, the article saying because you're the article says that you're saying that it would it they would for matchmaking the Compromise arises from matchmaking VI global leaderboard should you and your chums play online against strangers. I mean, really, Nintendo? Really? I mean, you couldn't have a set it up in a way where you don't have to use leaderboards, where you could play online with maybe your friends or all that stuff? I mean, that that's a really... Honestly, I think that's a really stupid decision for Nintendo to make though. I mean, and it also fits in the criticism sometimes that there are decisions, there are questionable decisions Nintendo make that does kind of make you wonder, are they really paying attention? Look, 
I like Nintendo. I'm considering myself a Nintendo fan. I've been a Nintendo fan since back in the 80s when my when I, when I played my very first game, the Super Mario Brothers, and I still consider Super Mario Brothers 3 the greatest video game of all time. Some may debate that, but I still stand behind that and all. But there are qu times when I do have to question some of their decision making in certain areas, such as the fact that you have to use a phone to do voice chat, which I think is a very odd decision considering other consoles you just plug in and just you're good to go. And I really think Nintendo should consider working with Discord to get their voice chat option fixed though. But the fact that you can't play with friends online yeah, that's a head scratcher right there. I don't understand the decision um, on this as well. And I can't see how you can't make like a private match online or anything like that. I mean, it's a very odd and I personally think it's a stupid decision for Nintendo for what they're doing with this. So overall, I'm still looking forward to Super, Super Mario Maker 2 hitting the Nintendo Switch. But I won't deny that this this is th there are some questionable decisions Nintendo has made in terms of some of the features. So, is it possible we could see a patch later down the road, or maybe some sort of update? It's a possibility, but right now I, I do question some of their decisions on some of the features that they have in in regards of Super Mario Maker 2 um, in general. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part six. And this one has to do with the announcement that a remake of the PS3 360 version of Ghostbusters is coming not only to the PS4, but also the Xbox One, I believe PC as well, and even the Nintendo Switch too. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part six of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the announcement of the remastered version of Ghostbusters, the video game. Now, as a child from the 80s, though, back then, there were a lot of things I were into. Obviously, Nintendo was one of those things. But, of course, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters were also things that I was into when I was a little kid. I remember having Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figurines to Ghostbusters figurines, the Echo one, to basically the Firehouse. Hell, I remember watching the old um, Ghostbusters cartoons when I was little as well, along with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. And I remember playing the 2009 release of Ghostbusters, but I played it on the Nintendo Wii. I didn't play it on the PS3 and 360 version. and. It was actually a fun game. That that version was developed by uh, Redfly Studio, and it was one of the few games that actually used motion controls that made sense, though. Was, that, along with the Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, they, these were one of the very few games that I could think of that used motion controls very well. Unfortunately, the brand has sort of hit some rough spots over the years. Obviously, the most obvious one is, of course, Ghostbusters Answer to Call, a controversial film by many in which there were many people who weren't um, happy with that film, ranging from it being an all-female cast to being a full-on reboot rather than the long-awaited um, Ghostbusters 3. And while I think there are some criticism, and I do think Sony deserves some of the blame for them basically dismissing the criticism as everybody being sexist and racism, though, it, you cannot ignore the fact that the other side is also guilty, especially when they went out of their way to harass some of the celebrities, especially Leslie Jones as well. So to me, both sides certainly share the blame. Nevertheless, though, the film didn't exactly perform well at the box office indeed. And a video game that was supposedly, a, in a way, a sequel to the Ghostbusters Answer to Call also did not exactly um, performed very well either and that led to the studio that worked on the game to shut its doors for good. Uh, and, to, and so for most part the series has kind of been well stuck in limbo and since then though since then it's that's where it's been until recently that we learned that Ghostbusters 3 was um, happening though with a little bit of a teaser trailer and it looked like 
Ivan Reitman's son would be the one handling um, Ghostbusters 3. And now we've recently now learned that a remake, and with that, we have learned that a remastered version of the 2009 classic Ghostbusters, uh, the video game, is coming not only to PC, but also PS4, Xbox One, and even the Nintendo Switch is getting this as well. Although it's, although the trailer shows the remastered PS3 and 360 version, there's no word if the Switch version will be getting that version or basically the version that was on originally on the Wii. Although judging by what I've been judging by what I've been reading, it looks like it's going to be the remastered version of the PS3 and 360 version. Um, anyway, in an article on Destructoid, though. Um, it reads, quote, following it, following it on form from its unofficial reveal at the hands of the Ta Taiwan Digital Game Rating Committee, the PlayStation Europe channel has dropped a trailer for the remastered edition of 2009's Ghostbuster the video game. The remastered version is being handled by S Saber Interactive, who recently found success with the um, multiplayer shooter World War Z, and Mad Dog Games, who are responsible for Shaq Vu, A Legend Reborn. Though the trailer trailer is PlayStation ban, branded, the remaster has been confirmed for PS4, PC, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Um, Ghostbusters of Video Games sees the player in the role of a new recruit who takes to the streets of New York with Ray, Peter, Egon, and Wilson to take up the ghoulish and, you know, the ghosts and all that stuff. And that guy in the painting who tried to become a baby. The third person venture saw the return of many of the original cast members, including Bill Murray, Aaron Huston, the late Harold Ramis, a Anna Potts, Dan Aykroyd, and even William uh, William Arthin, if I'm saying his name correctly, as EPA asshole Walter Peck. So it's certainly nice that the game is getting a remastered edition, and it's nice that it's coming to the Nintendo Switch, though. Although I am very curious to see if 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 it's coming to Nintendo Switch to see what changes if there could be any changes to be made into that version as well. Will it have say motion controls and all that stuff or gyro aiming in any way? There are some saying that it will, but I want to wait and see for myself though. Will we? Will there be a physical version as well? I mean, will they not only have a physical version for the PS4 or Xbox One, but could we see a physical version? Um, for the Nintendo Switch, and will the Switch version ha have just the PS3 and will have the remastered version that will be on the PS4 and Xbox One? Will it have the version that we remember playing on the Wii or or whatsoever? So it's going to be very interesting to see when this game is um, released. Um, do they have a release date? Let me double check though. Um, um, oh, it will launch later in 2019, so sometime this year. And obviously, there it may be a way to kind of build up for the upcoming Ghostbusters 3. Although I am a little curious to see if when Ghost when Ghostbusters 3 happened, will they acknowledge events in Ghostbusters the video game? So I'm very curious about see if that does happen. So overall. Great that Ghostbusters, the video game's getting remastered. Um, I'm looking forward to trying the remastered version when it comes out. And I'm also curious to see how well it plays, um, especially on the Nintendo Switch, since it's coming to the um, Nintendo Switch as well. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to part seven. And this one has to do with the announcement of the game Time Spinners is coming to the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part seven of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the announcement of the Metroidvania style game Time Splitter is coming not only to the Xbox One, but also to the Nintendo Switch as well. And supposedly it will be out next week. Um, when it comes to certain genres or certain type of games that I like, though, the one genre I like that I do enjoy the most is those Metroidvania style type of a game. I've always been a fan of those genres ever since playing um, games like um, Ever since playing Castlevania Sympathy of the Night, one of my favorite entries in the Castlevania series, though. Um, and sadly, a game that 
I would love to see come to the Nintendo Switch, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be happening anytime soon. Um, in the meantime, as far as Metroidvania games go, um, there isn't really a whole lot that I could think of that that are available on the um, Nintendo Switch. Obviously, we've seen some, like, I think there's one called Axum Verge. Again, I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. Two games like The Mummy Demaster, which to me is probably one of the better uses of a movie licensed video game, not to mention the fact that you have a movie licensed video game that is better than the movie to be exact. And of course we have the upcoming Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is going to be out next month, or actually it's going to be out in June, but will not will probably come a little bit later at basically work Switch owners will be getting it at um, June 25th. So it's nice to see that a developer is bringing uh, one of their games that they brought over to the Vita, the, the PS4, and was released on PC over here to not only the Switch, but also to the Xbox One as well. Um, according to an article from, I believe, TechRapture.net, um, they're reporting that, quote, 2018 Time Splitter, Time Spinner, I apologize, I said Splitter, I meant Spinner, my bad, I apologize for that, will be launching on the Nintendo Switch and Xbox One on June 4th, published Chucklefish announced in a press release. Previously, the Metroidvania game has been available on PS4, PSVR, Windows, Macs, and Linux. Time Spinner is an action platform that draws inspiration from games such as Castlevania Sympathy of the Night and Super Metroid. The game stars pro protagonist um, Luana, L-U-N-A-I-S, who has been chosen by her village by her village timekeeper. In the event of a disaster, war, or other emergencies, the, des the designated timekeeper is to go back in time to prevent that future from ever happening. However, this effects erase their original timeline and they must never again have contact with their original timeline. Luana must fulfill her duties when an empire attacks her village and kills her family. Transported into the past, she must gain new weapons, powers, and abilities to change the future and avenge her family, though. though um, Chuck Fish... Chucklefish press release did not mention any pricing, but the game currently sells for $19.99, $20 on Steam and the PlayStation Store, so it's likely to carry over to the Switch and um, Xbox One. So it's certain. So this this is definitely one of the titles I would be looking forward to trying out, though. Um, like I said, I am a fan of the Metroidvania style gameplay, and it certainly is. This is certainly one I am looking forward to trying out. Plus, for Switch owners, though, it's something to keep us occupied until we wait for, you know, the release of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is, again, from what I understand, aiming for a June 25th release date on the Nintendo Switch. So, my overall take is that I'm looking forward to trying out Time Spinners, um, obviously, and if you're a fan of the Metroidvania genre, it's probably one you should probably keep an eye out for and from what I understand it did get some good reviews so this is definitely one I'm going to keep an eye definitely keep an eye out for and supposedly the release date um, is June 4th so that's always going to be next week so if if you're looking for a Metroidvania game to play or something to keep your eye keep you busy until Bloodstained Ritual of the Night comes out though then it is then I would say then it, then probably Time Spinner is probably one you might want to take a look at as well. So overall, nice heads coming to the Nintendo Switch, and I'm looking forward to trying it out when it comes out on um, June 4th. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part 8. Oh, there we go. Part 8 of our My Two Cent video, and this one has to do with supposedly comments in regards to the upcoming Avengers game from Square Enix. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part uh, there we go. Part 8 of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at some information that has come out in regards of the upcoming Avengers um, game from Square Enix, though. Um, that's, that we'll probably hear more information about at this year's E3. Now, when it comes to Marvel games, at least as far as this generation has gone, though... Um, the only Marvel game I... We, Marvel has sort of... Some of their games have been kind of a hit and miss. 
While Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity War by many wasn't liked by a whole lot of people, though not to mention some people were kind of upset with the Capcom's comments about in regards to the X-Men though, um, their other games have done pretty well, especially 2018's Spider-Man though, which became, in my view, the second best Spider-Man game since Spider-Man 2. And with the Marvel brand being popular as it is right now, we are basically getting basically one Marvel game we know it's coming out this year, and of course the Square Enix one um, as well, although I don't know if it will be out this year or not. Uh, the first one obviously is the long-awaited sequel of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which is a Nintendo Switch exclusive being published by Nintendo and developed by um, Koei Techno and I believe Omega Force and Team Ninja are involved. Well, we also know that that the developer Square Enix is working on their own Avengers game as well, and we're going to learn a little bit more about it um, at their E3 presentation. Um, in several articles, including this one from Engadget.com, it reads, quote, It's been a long two and a half years since Square Enix and Marvel teased plans for an Avengers game. But, but they're nearly, nearly ready to show, show the fruits of their labor. They now plan to unravel, unveil Marvel's Avenger at Square Enix E3 event, which starts at June 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern. There's little else to show right now, but this, but this confirms that Crystal Dynamics of Tomb Raider fame and Eidos Montreal Modern Deus Ex games um, are still attached um, to the superhero title, though. Um, there's a little doubt that the game will include familiar heroes from the Marvel Universe, but the rest is largely up in the air. Will this be a role-playing game, straight-up brawler, or something ent else entirely? And will it tie into the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, or, or closer to the comic books? The timing is right, at least it comes hot off the heroes of Avengers Endgame, and there are likely plenty of people still cr caving a superhero fix. And according to WCCF Tech, um, they did get some information from basically the E3 website, um, or at least from the Coliseum website, they have sort of of the game's description. And according to the description, it reads, quote, Embrace your power and join key members of the development team at Crystal Dynamics and the creative teams at Marvel Games as they talk exclusively about the upcoming Marvel's Avenger. This is a defining Avengers game experience, an epic action adventure that combines cinematic storytelling with continuous single player and co-op um, gameplay. Moderated by, by Andres um, Reina, R-E-N-A, again, I apologize for not saying it correctly. Assemble in a team up to four players, master extraordinary abilities, customize your hero to fit your playstyle, and combine powers to defend an ever-expanding world under a constant threat. So, I am a little curious to see what this Avengers game Square Enix is, is making, and what kind of approach they're going to, going to make with this game, especially with Crystal Dynamics is making it, though. Is it going to be a linear adventure? Is it going to be open world? And of course, we're curious to see what systems this of Avenger Square Enix Avengers game is going to be on. If I had to take a guess, though, most likely, though, we could most likely PC and PS4 and Xbox One, though. Although there, I've heard rumors about the possibility of a PS5 or an Xbox Scar version. We'll have to wait and see if that if that turns out to be true or not. But my most likely guess is PS4, Xbox One, and PC as well. As far as a Switch version goes, while it is possible it could come to the Nintendo Switch, for now I'm leaning towards it being unlikely though. But who knows? We'll have to wait and see if that does happen. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see what they are developing on. We'll see if they're using Unreal Engine 4 or not. Though, and even if it doesn't come to the Nintendo Switch, at least we have, for Switch owners like us, at least we have, you know, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Whether that, whether that interests you or not, that's, it's, that's again, that's going to be your opinion. So, overall, I'm curious to see what this adventure game from Square Enix is going to be, and the fact that it's being developed by Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. And we'll have to wait, and again, we'll have to wait to see what systems it goes comes to. But like I said, I'm leaning towards right now PS4, Xbox One, and PC.
<clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to our ninth and final part of our My Two Cent video, and this one has to do with we finally got some information on Death Stranding and, and of course, a release date for it. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our ninth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at we finally got a release date for Death Stranding, the project developed by Hodita Kojima, if I'm saying the name correctly, part of Kojima Production, and a partnership with Sony. Now, ever since he left Konami, since Konami has sort of, well, we all know what Konami has turned into lately, though, um, his new project that he's been working with, teaming up with Sony, though, has sort of been kind of a mystery for a bit we've seen teaser trailers and all that though but it's still to me it still is kind of confusing i'm still trying to figure out exactly the whole plot or anything like that but he has a history of making these trailers that are still unique and they still like pull you in like you want to know more and you want to see the game itself though and well we finally got a brand new trailer um, coming out uh, that just came out that revealed a little bit more of the gameplay and how it's going to be um, It looks like there's a bit more exploration There's also a bit more stealth in it since he is the creator of the Metal Gear Solid series um, And we finally have a actual release date for Death Stranded uh, Barring any last minute or anything that would delay the game or anything like that, but we, I like that though we basically now have confirmed, and this is from A-R-S-T-E-C-H-N-I-C-A. -E Again, I apologize if I'm not saying this correctly. Um, we now confirm that the game will be released on November 8th, though. Um, and that is certainly is a title I am looking forward to trying out, though. It's... It still is kind of confusing, in my opinion. I see, I've watched the trailer several times, and some of it is kind of interesting some of it i mean some of it's still confusing but we do have but more information did come out and according to what the article is saying though um the game evolves around a united states that had been torn astray under some kind of plague or extinction event the hero sam played by actor norman reedus i believe from from the walking dead series is asked by the president to help us reconnect to make america whole to which the character Sam replies, part of my language, you're the president of Jack Shit, though. Yet clearly, Sam is compelling to do something. The trailer shows him generating ladders and ropes to, to scale rocky cliff sides, getting into Mio Fitzcocks, um, hopping on a stylus three wheel military vehicle, stealth crawl through tall grass alongside a giant tank, which judging by the trailer, it looks like a World War I tank. So I'm very curious if there is time traveling in this or something like that. Um, shooting guns and scanning environments to discover and stealth sneak around spooky creatures made um, um, of dust. We've seen Sam remark, um, we see Sam remark about the force a, about a force known as BT, which seemed to be triggered by rain, and while some faceless soldiers hate the stuff, other creepy characters, like the guy who's wrapped around with magic, magic powder and then licks a woman's face because um, Kojima, seems to invite those rain. In Sam's case, the glowing tube baby, which I'm still kind of a little creeped out about, we see in the other trailer, seems to be the key to surviving BT and recognizing spectral force that floats around that floats throughout the stuff and when it rains comes sam plugs the baby bridge chassis to his suit to plug into the other side so i'm i am still confused about this trailer as much as the next person is but the trailer definitely gives off a bit of a metal gear so metal gear solid vibe to it in a way and as confusing as this trailer is though I'm still looking forward to trying this game out when it comes out on November 8th. Uh, one thing I will say is, is, although it's coming to the PS4 though, I wouldn't be surprised 
if, and I again, I don't know if this is will this will happen or not, and it's and it's possible it may not happen at all. But I wouldn't be surprised if we hear that they are developing a PlayStation PS5 version. Though again, it's too early to say if that's even going to happen. For now, the game is coming to the PS4 on November 8th, barring any major delay that says otherwise or anything like that. But I certainly wouldn't rule out a PlayStation 5 version. But overall, my takeaway is that I still think the trailer is confusing, but nevertheless, I'm still looking forward to trying out Death Stranding when it comes out on November 8th. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about these rumors about The Witcher 3 coming to the um, Nintendo Switch? Or at least this report of several retailers showing off what looks like The Witcher 3 coming to the Nintendo Switch. Do you think The Witcher 3 is truly coming to the Nintendo Switch? Do you think, or do you think this rumor is false? Um, if The Witcher 3 is coming to the Nintendo Switch, um, since Panic Button has said they are not working on it, what other development team do you think could be working on a Switch version of The Witcher 3? And could this, in a way, open the door to the possibility of maybe something like Cyberpunk 2077, 2077 coming to the Nintendo Switch? What are your thoughts about Techland and them supposedly bringing a AAA game to the Nintendo Switch? Are you a little disappointed that Dying Light 2 is not coming to the Nintendo Switch? Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? What game do you think they could be bringing to the Nintendo Switch? And do you think the rumors of the possibility that this COJ called Jazir Gunslinger is that game that they're bringing over to the Nintendo Switch? And is that the kind of game that interests you? What are your thoughts about Star Ocean, um, this remake of the PSP version, which is a remake of the original Famicom version, coming to the Switch and the PS4. Are you looking forward to this title in any way? Do you think, are you glad that a Star Ocean game is coming to the Nintendo Switch? Do you think other entries of the Star Ocean game should come to the Nintendo Switch? Um, what are your thoughts about Spice and Wolf VR coming to, you know, PlayStation VR, um, Oculus Rift, um, um, the v view um, other VR sets like Nintendo Labo VR set though um, do you think this is a good thing do you want to see more third party uh, VR games come to like the VR Labo in any way does this game interest you does this game not interest you at all what are your thoughts about Nintendo's decision for Super Mario Maker 2 in regards of no amiibo support and you can't play with friends online is this a big deal in any way? Do you think people are blowing this out of proportion? Or do you think people do have a right to be upset with Nintendo and think this is an odd decision for them to make for their upcoming release of Super Mario Maker 2? What are your thoughts about the remastered Ghost 2009 Ghostbusters game coming to Xbox One, PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch? Is this a title you are looking forward to trying out? Did you enjoy it when it was released on the PS3 and 360 back in the day? Did you not enjoy it at all, though? Um, did you enjoy the Wii version when that was released as well? Are you glad that they... Do you think they should just port the PS3 and 360 version over to the Switch? Or do you think it should be a remastered of the Wii version in any way? What are your thoughts about Time Spinner coming to the Nintendo Switch? Are you, or any Xbox One as well. Are you looking forward to this title at all? Are you a fan of the Metroidvania genre and all that stuff? And do you think this is a nice title to keep you occupied until Bloodstained Ritual of the Night comes out? What are your thoughts about the upcoming Avenger game and Crystal Dynamic and Eidos Montreal working on it, on it though? Is this, are you, is this the Avengers game you're looking forward to trying out? Um, is um, do you think it, do you expect that it will come to the PS4, Xbox One, or PC? Do you think it could come to the PS5 or the Xbox Scarlet? Do you think there's any chance this could come to the Nintendo Switch? Or, or do you think it's unlikely that will happen? And, and if it doesn't come to the Nintendo Switch, are you okay with like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? And what are your thoughts about the Death Stranding, the latest trailer, plus the release date of November 8th though? 
Is the trailer still as confusing? Like, I still think it's still confusing, though. Is this one of your most anticipated games? Are you looking forward to this when this game comes? This game is dropped on November 8th. Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, um, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, oh, and if you do, make sure you hit, the, if you do subscribe to my YouTube channel, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye.